Kryptonite desire set my heart afire. Heart on fire. Hey y'all, Mama here. Tonight's question comes from Brittany, my little friend Peanut, in Vermont. And she asks, what is the difference between hard and soft limits? For that, we're going to have to go to the desktop because you really cannot talk about hard and soft limits without talking about negotiation checklists because you don't know often what your limits are until you know what sort of things are available. Okay, so I've got three different checklists pulled up here. We're going to look at each of them a little bit, some more than others. Um, but this one says, no means you will not do that item under any circumstances, a hard limit. A hard limit could be a hard limit um, for moral reasons. It could be a gross out kind of thing. It could be a, a bad experience in your past that makes you not want to do that particular item. And for some people, it's sort of, sort of simple things like they can't be hit with a hairbrush or a belt. Um, for others, it's it's it, their hard limits are just the big things, like uh, no <clears throat> underage, no um, animals, um, you know, the big ones. Um, now, hard and soft limits are not limited to submissives. Hard and soft limits are also um, necessary for dominance to have and to know what they are because a lot of times there are things that a dominant or a top will not do and will not be involved in and again a hard limit is something that you will not do under any circumstances um, you would rather walk away from the scene or walk away from the relationship than do that thing a soft limit something you don't want to do you want them to consider your feelings in that uh, particular item but if it's really important to the dominant and they really really want to do it then okay I'll, I'll kind of put up with it I'll tolerate it that's sort of a soft limit um, soft limits could be um, don't pull my hair a certain way or um, you know for me <laughs> A soft limit is is sort of what I call a britsky, um, and that's from an old show called Herman's Head way back in the day. And the 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 character inside Herman's Head called Lust, he talked about doing a britsky, which is basically a motorboat in a girl's boobs. Motorboats don't do anything physically for me, but it's not that gross or anything so if it's something you really want to do okay get it out of your system and let's move on that is a soft limit because it's not a turn on for me it's not it's something I would normally seek out but I don't really care every once in a while if it happens um, and hard and soft limits do change as well and that's why it's important at the beginning of a relationship especially if you are a new um, submissive or and or a new dominant um, it's very important to do the checklist at the beginning of the relationship the relationship it's also important for each partner to review the checklist every once in a while because as you try things they could move from hard limit to soft limit they could move to soft limits to not a limit they could move from a yes I really want to try that to a hard limit. It just really depends on how things go as you try different things in the relationship. Um, now the, the other thing that I wanted to show you about this particular checklist is that this goes from zero to five, five being the highest. Now um, the other one that I'm actually going to go over some of the items and stuff on the checklist, it goes from 1 to 6, and 1 being the highest instead of the highest number being the highest. So we'll come back to that in just a moment. This is a checklist, sorry I should have started out at the top, 
from uh, Jay Wiseman. And it is a very detailed checklist. It's a very detailed checklist for just a scene um, or for a relationship even. And Jay is actually and an, a working EMT so he's he's very very aware of a lot of the things that he's put in this checklist and that is the reason for them all these um, questions about physical limitations and stuff um, it's important stuff to know for anybody but basically this one covers the people who will take part will it be just you and I Will there be more? Will there be more bottoms, more tops? Who will be the dominant? Who will be the submissive? Will it be a um, a role play scene, or just a regular bond, a regular bondage and, and discipline scene? Where will we do this? What time and how long? What level of obedience should we expect? and what level of overpowering or forcing do, should the submissive expect from the dominant. Submissive's limitations physically and emotionally, um, you know, do you have heart problems, liver problems, lung problems, neck, back, bones, and joints, kidneys, nervous system, or mental problems? Um, are you wearing contact lenses? Do you have a pacemaker? Any metal plates implanted? That's an important one because um, if you do have a metal plate, say, in your leg or if you have screws in the knee or whatever, and you're doing electrical play, you want to avoid those areas because you could cause a very serious burn all the way through the knee. Um, and a lot of these I will actually cover in an upcoming episode, uh, a webisode, because of a new question that I got asked just tonight. So I won't go through a lot of this, but this is a very detailed um, checklist with a lot of really good information. And it seems like a lot, but I mean, if a submissive's taking aspirin, you definitely don't want to do a cutting scene because then they're going to bleed more, you know? Um, if they're taking antihistamines, they might get sleepy during. Um, are they allergic to tape or um, spermicide? You know, I mean, and then and the submissive needs to know about the dominant too. And there's um, marital relationship status questions. Then there's questions. There's questions about diseases and STDs. You know, these are important things for partners to know too, especially if there's going to be any body uh, fluid exchange or um, intercourse. Uh, which sexual acts are acceptable during this scene? Uh, what sort of bondage? And it's very specific as to what sorts of bondage. Sorry, so there's specific bondage questions and there's um, very specific questions about pain you know how much pain do you expect to receive what types are acceptable um, and he actually lists a lot of the implements and different types of activities within the checklist um, the other lists that we're going to look at have that same sort of information but it's all listed as specific ones and ranking how excited you are about those particular things. We discuss safe words and it's their meanings because safe words and we're gonna have an upcoming show about safe words as well um, but they can be as simple as red yellow green you know for green is I like that a lot please continue yellow is you're approaching my limit on being able to take that particular implement or that particular activity and, and red of course meaning uh, please stop doing that so um, 
Um, you also have nonverbal safe words, and again, we'll go into that in a future episode. Um, then we go on to questions that, um, you know, which statement best suits you? I live DS lifestyle every day in most activities. So this is your level of commitment to DS in daily life. Um, are you interested in online? Online or on the phone? Do you want real time only? You know, um, etc., etc. So again, this one goes on to describe specific um, activities that you would expect of a submissive um, in public and private. What should the the submissive call yourself? Other males, other females, um, doms and submissives. Um, would you want to control their clothing, control their food, their daily activities? Um, would you desire to share your sub with others? This is good information for a submissive to know because if they if they only want to belong to one person and not be shared with others, then they wouldn't want to be with someone who's poly or someone who likes to share their submissive with their dominant friends. Um, you know, would you? require your sub to have a tattoo or a brand, a collar, um, change their screen name to reflect their ownership, etc, etc. What forms of punishment would you use? Now these are often some um, detailed things that, you know, like you saw in the famous movie that came out last Valentine's Day, there's lots and lots of negotiation leading up to a contract. And this is, this is actually a very good negotiation tool for leading up to a contract because this this lays out what the dominant expects what the submissive can put up with or will be willing to agree to and and they they sort of meet in the middle um, and then he recommends after the session we need a coming down period the next day we should discuss how things went a week later follow up he recommends they each do a best part on a scale of 1 to 10, the worst part of the scene on a scale of 1 to 10, the most memorable part, and other comments. So you get sort of feedback from one another, which is a good thing, because now I like it during the scene, but the, a lot of submissives especially, and a lot of bottoms, they get into a headspace that um, they often don't like to be verbal. They don't like to talk about things in the moment. They'll talk about them later, but, you know, um, and again, subspace and top space um, and aftercare, which the checking in on somebody um, after right after the session, checking in on them the next day and a week later, that's all to do with aftercare. Um, because when you get in the intense space, and, and again, we'll talk about this in a future show, I'm really sorry, um, kind of scattered tonight. Um, but when you when you get in that intense headspace during a scene, you often kind of crash from it the next day um, when it's taken away, sort of. And so that's the reason for the follow up and the aftercare. Um, then he talks about you know each of them should should talk about their sexual fantasies, what it is it they like about SM play, and that will sort of help them get to know one another and what they expect from s and M. I was so glad to see the wisdom pages are still up and active on the net because this was um, something that helped mama learn um, when I was just starting out in the lifestyle and I'm really glad to see that they're still available. Um, this questionnaire is similar as far as level of experience, you know, what's your sexual orientation, what kind of relationship do you prefer, etc., etc. And it sort of finds out what each person is expecting from the relationship or from a session. Um, you know, what, what do you believe the purpose of pain in a session is? Is it a reward, a punishment? for correction only, whatever pleases my partner, or you know what, I'm not sure, I haven't had that many sessions yet. 
sex is necessary or an enhancement or not necessary or no 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 sex no sex in our violence um are you cuff comfortable playing at parties or only at home one-on-one -on -one? this was the one thing that i really wanted to show you here role playing and several different kinds of roles that could be played and i thought that was really neat so sorry y'all i've been mostly fine all evening and thought i'd be okay the last show that i did i got through the whole thing of talking without any cough drops or coughing but this time i'm i'm drinking i'm i'm drinking liquids <laughs> uh, sucking on a cough drop and nothing is helping i'm having to pause constantly to cough and i do apologize um okay so this one it goes on about fetishes and physical medical physical or emotional concerns that's a little bit smaller space than what uh, Jay Wiseman went into so as far as that goes I'd really recommend his it's a lot more thorough but this one does address that at least uh, limits concerns about depth and ex exclusivity of relationship preferred method of birth control etc etc alright so here's the checklist and again this one goes from one being the best to six being no absolutely not and some of these things if you didn't see them you wouldn't know that that was a thing that somebody might expect now the first several things are spanking by hand and then we go into different implements that you get spanked by then we get into different implements uh, that you could be bound by plastic wrap body bags I mean a lot of people are like what body bags uh, straight jackets they didn't even know that that was a thing within the, the scene you know um, spreader bars a lot of these people actually have to uh, sort of hey what is that um, tickling a lot of people have a hard limit against tickling they just cannot stand it um, for them it's actual torture and they don't like it um, ice mama's got a soft into hard limit on ice I really d dislike ice I really do um, hot wax fire and ice needles um, cutting abrasions abrasion play is actually taking something rough and and causing an abrasion on the skin actually you know like like steel wool or something and actually causing a wound uh, hard limit I think um, not into it don't understand it haven't really tried it I'll, I'll confess haven't tried it except in real life and, and it doesn't appeal you know so hey um, so I mean you know a lot of uh, most people have heard of vibrators and dildos strap-ons anal sex etc fantasy rape directed by sexuality you know might be a hard limit especially for a lot of guys um, threesomes groups foot kissing dirty words cross-dressing infantilism that's making somebody into an adult baby with diapers and and baby talk and everything hard limit for mama mama has changed her diapers until she gets grandbabies golden showers would probably be a soft limit for mama uh, I don't I don't care for any kind of bathroom play but if somebody wants me to pee on them if they really want it that bad I'll pee on them I don't care as long as they're cleaning it up <laughs> uh, but you know a lot of these things you don't even know that they're they could be a thing so you don't know that they're a limit and one thing I don't recommend is saying I have no limits because the first thing I'm gonna say to you is okay so you don't mind if I cut off a foot or you don't mind if I kill you you don't mind if I do this or do that or do the other thing that sounds outrageous but unless you have those things listed as as hard limits you know no permanent bodily damage no this no that no the other then um, you leave yourself open to that sort of thing 
and here is like different body parts have you had them in bondage have you um, had punishment or torture on those on those places and and rate each as acceptable it's a pretty pretty thorough checklist not quite as thorough on some items as Jay Weissman's but pretty good really got to tighten up on those narrations um, all right so hopefully that explains a little more about hard and soft limits finding out what they are and and then um, also the knowledge that as you progress in the relationship or just in your media your personal BDSM journey or kink journey um, that you need to revisit your hard and soft limits every once in a while um, redo the checklist I'd say maybe every six months to a year um, and see what's changed and see what hasn't um, I I'd love to have my old wisdom uh, checklists that I filled out way back in the day and see how far I've come since 1999 um, but hey you know um, Anyway, any questions or comments? And please, please, please keep the BDS and, and kink lifestyle questions coming. Um, Mama's getting low on them. <laughs> I did get three new ones tonight, which is awesome, because um, uh, those are going to be some really important shows coming up. And I wish, 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 wish that I could get every newbie um, to the scene to to watch the one on safety. And as far as safe words not only safe words but safe gestures um, safe calls um, the importance of negotiation and knowing exactly what to expect in a scene and within the relationship etc etc um, if I could get every newbie to watch this maybe we wouldn't have any more Craigslist horror stories um, but um, in any case we're gonna educate who we can as we can and and uh, keep the questions coming um, send to my email or my Twitter um, or comment in the in the comments below mama loves y'all bye